All right, I want to make this clarification right now. At this point, the back side of the pouch is technically done. You could just take scissors, trim off that section, and you'd be ready to go with the rest of your pouch. But if you've done a design multiple times and you see some new ideas for improvisation, that's what art's about. So if you want to go down that road and explore it to see what it means to you, take the time. And that is exactly what I'm going to do to see where I can take the detail with this extra strap and take advantage of some other techniques that I know how to do that might be incorporated well into the design. So there'll be some side tangent videos about what that improvisation looks like. Okay, so we have some improvisation in mind and the first thing I want to do is get all my chisel work for the perimeter stitch laid out and then I can start with all the bad ideas. So I'm just going to use these little clippies to hold the leather flat so that way when I go to do my chisel work I don't have to worry about anything wandering away from the tip of the leather. Uh, they make a double-sided tape for this but for what I'm going to do, I'm going to have to peel this off, do another step just on the black leather, and then put it back. So uh, in the world of good design, you end up using a lot of clamps just to test stuff out. Clamps, bolts, adhesives, just to make things work. So we're going to start by just laying out our chisel work all the way along the perimeter. And I think that that can be done pretty easily in time lapse. So we'll start with a couple and then move on to time lapse. Okay, so here's where we get to the improvisational part. I want to incorporate these diamond pyramids, right, all along the top front closure of my pouch. But I need to establish a couple of things, like when does my pouch start to turn versus starting it too soon where it's on the radius, where it's gonna get fatigue and wear against the person wearing it, right? So we don't want that. So we're going to establish that clearly. That line is here, right? So we don't want to go beyond this point. So in order to get that totally correct, we're going to lay the whole thing flat and then determine that this is the first point for the pyramid to begin, right there, okay? And so there's a tiny little index where the prongs are pressed, okay? And so, now, this is why we don't do the stitching beforehand, we're gonna use this little tool, which is an aftermarket modification, to make sure that all of the pyramids are spaced the correct way. And we're just gonna register those holes. On side A, and on side B, okay? Left side, right side, however you want to do it. And the trick here is that will allow us to push these prongs into place, but ensure that by the time we get to the fold of the pouch, right, that it's on the top side, not the front side. Now the other thing we need to be concerned about, and this is when it helps to have another pouch already ready already, is to make sure that our strap on the roll around doesn't end up, we're just going to stuff this pouch in the other pouch, doesn't end up too far from where we expected. So we want to make sure that if we were to pull this through the front, it would work. 
and that would give us an indication of how much of this strap we're not allowed to use. Now, you can get that information by just knowing where your taper starts, right? The pyramids do not go beyond this point, but it's always good to do a quick test to make sure it's behaving the way you think. So, now, what we're gonna do is just time lapse it and finish out the layout. Okay, so just to clarify, when you're putting these together, right, you're putting the little pronged pyramid part in. It's just two prongs that you slide in through the slotting, and then you can hammer them down or you can bend them down with pliers, whatever it is you prefer. Oftentimes what I'll do is I'll grab it with a pair of brass pliers, but any old pair of pliers works. And I just push it down with the nose on one side, bend it over, and then push it down with the nose. So, it's a pretty, pretty straightforward process. Let's see if we can get that a little easier for the camera to see. We would like to have the camera see this well. So we've got those prongs pushed in, and then the pliers themselves, you just grab and turn just to get like a 45 degree angle. And then what I'm doing with the pliers, right, is just pressing against that prong so it knocks over completely, right? So then grab it again and then knock it down. So we're gonna switch to time-lapse and do the remainders because no need to show that more than once properly. Okay, so once you've added the pyramid studs, you just want to make sure that the belt is still behaving well. Um, you'll find that the orientation in which you put the prongs, depending on how it's flexing on the radius, uh, they'll want to pop out. So the reason why I chose the bend this way, perpendicular to the direction of the strap, is because they're less prone to popping out, okay? If you have all the prongs rotated so that there's basically a silver line going down the length of the strap, you'll find that just the opening and closing of the pouch forces these little pyramids to pop right out. They'll fatigue at this joint. So you always want to do a test roll and make sure there isn't any weird behavior you don't know about before you commit to stitching all of this together. 